Yo people, I'm Sean from the Net Ninja, and this is lesson 9 in HTML Basics, the image tag. So, surprise surprise, the image tag is what we use to show images to the user. And we do this by specifying within the tag where the image is stored using the source attribute. Now if you remember from previous tutorials, I said that all tags can have these things called attributes. And attributes are just a way of specifying additional information to the tag about that tag. So in this case, it's the source attribute. And within the source attribute, we're going to say where the image is being stored, the path to the image. So we're going to jump back into brackets now, and we're going to pop an image in our web page. Right, here I am, exactly where we left off last time. And I think what I want to do is pop a really big banner at the top of the web page just to catch some attention. But before I do that, I'm going to quickly explain how I've stored my image. So if you look in the left hand uh, kind of navigation bit here, we've got this image folder and I've created this folder by right clicking and go to new folder. And then you can say uh, you can type in your folder name. I'll put image two. And then what you want to do is find your image wherever it's stored, whether it's on your computer or whether it's online from a website and you want to save it into this folder. Once you've done that, we're ready to crack on. I'm going to delete this image two folder because I've already done it here. And you can see within this folder, I've named my image fish-banner.jpg. And I got this from a website called freeimages.com. And freeimages.com is a pretty cool website for just kind of developing websites locally on your machine and testing and whatnot. So you can go here. I've searched for fish and I found this one, which I really think kind of captures everything that Mr. Mr. Green's Smelly Fish Emporium is all about. So I'm going to use this image. You can use whichever image you want to do. Once you've got that, save it into the folder and I'll see you back inside brackets. Okay, so once you've saved your image, uh, we're going to add it into our HTML document. So the first thing we want to do is add the image tag. And the attribute, the source, we're going to specify where it's being stored. And this attribute is going to be relative to this HTML document. So our image is being stored in this folder here. So what we want to do is type in the folder name first of all. And you can see that brackets is giving me kind of a tip as to where it thinks the image is going to be stored itself. And it's suggesting we put this forward slash here because that means we're going to say to the document, look, we're going inside this folder, inside the image folder. And once I put the forward slash, it's found this image called fish hyphen banner. So I can just double click this other one or just single click it rather. And it's going to pop that in for me and show me a little thumbnail, which is really cool just to make sure I've got the right one. So we've put our uh, we've put the path to our image in, and we're going to save this out now and see what it looks like in the browser. Okay, there it is, and it's pretty big. Um, one thing I don't like about this is that we're having to scroll all the way to the right to see the full image. Now I don't want it to go off the page. I want it to be just as wide as as the browser is. So we can do this by specifying some width and height attributes to the image in the image tag. So we'll jump back into brackets and we'll say a width attribute equals 100%. And this is going to say to the browser, look, whatever size you are, make this image 100% width of that browser. And we can specify a height if we want, but I'm going to leave this blank. You do it like this. I'm going to leave it blank. In fact, I'm not going to have it at all because all I care about is specifying the width of the image. I want it to be 100%. And then it'll work out the height automatically dependent on the width. So I'm going to save this. And again, we're going to view this in the browser. Oops, not that. It's showing me the... Ah, oh, there we go. That's why. There we go. So now you can see we don't have this scroll bar at the top. It's just taken the image and it's just as wide as the browser is. Now you can do this. You can add the width attribute to the HTML tag. However, I prefer to do it all in the CSS. We're separating the visual aspects then to the structural aspects. I see the HTML as being the structure of everything and the CSS as being the kind of design visual aspects of everything. So personally, I'd recommend specifying the width of the image as 100% in the CSS. But you can do it this way. It's entirely your call. So saying that much, I'm going to take off the width attribute. 
There is one more attribute in the image tag that I think is worth mentioning, and that is the alt attribute. And what this is, is a way of providing some alternative text instead of the image. So if you've got a screen reader or a website crawler coming onto your website, um, they don't see images, but they will read the alt text. So we just give the image um, some kind of short description. And I'm just going to say Mr. Green's Fish Emporium. So a screen reader wouldn't see the banner. They'd see this little bit of text here. And we'd save that out. And it's not going to have any effect visually, so I'm not going to jump into a browser. This is just so you can kind of get into the habit of putting an alt text in the, uh, the tag, just for kind of accessibility issues. OK, so that's all there is to the image tag. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is cover links and we're going to make like a, a nice little navigation system for the website. I'll see you guys then.